lecture for the undergraduate students for the understanding of the data fluency. Now, as an introduction, I want to say two things first. So first, uh, my introduction. So I am Dr. Shantari Rajoguri. So I have, I am an associate professor of Praxis Business School uh, in the field of economics and statistics and econometrics. And I'm also a part of, as a visiting faculty, I am associated with IIM Udaipur. So this is my introduction. Now, the reason behind this workshop. So obviously you want to know that why we have me, I mean, Praxis Business School and ABP Education has come together and uh, we have collaborated to uh, have this kind of workshop to do. So that reason is, uh, as my college, Praxis Business School, it is a pioneer in the field of data science. So back in 2013, we have first in India, we have started our full-time data science course. Now, after that, in our PGTM course also, we have introduced specialization as data science, specialization as business analytics. Similarly, we have introduced lots of modern subjects like cryptocurrency, blockchains, digital marketing, which are totally new. So along with that, so obviously there we can cater few students who come and join Praxis. So we thought that Praxis Business School and ABP Education that we should have something for the entire society, for the rest of the uh, students. So this is our kind of a social responsibility because you can understand nowadays everything is data. Other than data, you cannot do anything. So that is why we have thought that we can make a program for the students like you who are doing undergraduation in different fields. So you may be a part of statistics or uh, programming or may not be, but everybody should understand what is data and how to read data. So in today's workshop also, I'm not going to show you the very I mean, tough things, not statistics, but the basic mathematics, basic understanding of the uh, data, uh, basic understanding of the data by which you can read it, right? So that is the objective of our today's workshop. So you can find out in the session plan that first I am going to give you one introduction. So I'm going to tell you a story of a company by which, I mean, they have gathered the, they have taken the decision on the basis of the data and they have, uh, they are the successful leader, one of the successful company in India. So that is my first portion of our today's uh, workshop. Then I'm going to give you, I mean, show you one Excel, okay? So I'm going to show you all the data and I, I will tell you that how to find out the problems behind the data set and how to solve it. And that is, so it is, you have to remember this is a workshop, not webinar or seminar. So it would be a two way thing. So you cannot speak, I know, but you have to, you have to chat. So whenever I ask you questions, so it is a discussion mode, I am trying to do that. So I will ask lots of questions to you and please don't be hesitating just to uh, just write in the chat box. And then again, we continue with the discussion, right? So this is the mode of our today's workshop. So I think it's a time I can start. So again, so remember this thing. So it is only for uh, you people, so all of the people who have, who may have statistics, who may not have, who, who may have economics, may, have, may not have, but everybody should understand the story behind the numbers. Because whenever in the future you have to take any decision, you have to go through the data. So you have to understand how, what is the story, what is the, uh, Yeah, uh, yeah, I got the chat, that background noise, but I don't hear this. I think no, nothing is there. I mean, no noise from my end. So maybe it, it's, it's a problem of fan can be, let me check with the fan once. Yeah, so, okay, I'm trying to uh, make it minimize the script. Is it okay now? Okay. Okay, so the problem is with fan. 
right so fine so we have to uh, go forward with our today's workshop um, so again i'm re requesting actually whenever you want to take tell anything any question just write in the chat box and we are going through our discussion with that so this is our uh, today's agenda actually so first i'm going to give you one example of a business where you can find that there is a you can have success only with the simple calculation of data and then i am giving you uh, one excel sheet with some problem so i am going to show you there is six sheets of this excel sheet and you have to find out one by one that how you can uh, get through the problem and then ultimately you have to give us some idea that how to solve the problem right and so this is the main thing actually of today's thing and then last time i'm just going to give you if i have time i think i can have so great give uh, i can i want to give you a very brief of the new technique of the i mean which is the next step of statistics where you can find the difficult thing of data so definitely you don't have to do it but i'm i'm going to give you some little bit of introduction of the topic called machine learning artificial intelligence so these are very hot topic now so you should have little bit of idea for that and then if you want to do pursue your career with data science or business analytics you have to learn it more similarly in future if you have to join in some organization as uh, the data scientist or business analytics then you have analyst then you have to do it on your own hand so this is our entire agenda of today so let me go to the first thing So this is our first topic, like data driven driven decision making, and it's a. I am going to tell you one success story. So it is a story of two thousand two three. Okay, listen to me carefully. I am going to ask you a question, not not the question answer exam type, but you can have a discussion like that. So it is a largest FMCG company in two thousand year two thousand two three, right? But they are the undisputed leader of one product category so this is a story of itc so everybody knows itc and in 2002 and 3 itc had the sole product which is cigarette now they were thinking at that time that only one product is not good for a company because diversification can reduce the risk of anything so they wanted to uh, produce something else because there is some problem also so so at that time in 2002 3 they are they have the 75% market shares in cigarette with them but that time from that beginning of 2002 3 they were started facing different kinds of restrictions in the selling of the cigarette as you know that people cannot give advertisement of selling they have to put different pictures of the uh, of the negative effect if impact of cigarette smoking in the pack so these are different different problems they were facing and if you go through the budget if you are familiar with the budget you can see that every budget there is an increase in the price of cigarette so if there is an increase in the price so there is a chance of lesser amount of demand so these three are the problem of itc at that time so they were facing the restrictions they cannot give advertisement they have to put different kinds of negative pictures of the negative impact of cigarette smoking over there in the box similarly they can they every time the price of cigarette is increasing okay so uh, abhishek has written the same example abhishek it is the i mean if we should have different people because that that workshop is for only engineering student and this workshop is for non engineering student so it is the exactly same that we have to just we are in this example in this workshop we don't have the machine learning part because for we have we have designed two different workshop only one for the engineering student and that is we have uh, three hours so one and half hour is for the same thing which I'm going to teach now and the one and half hour for machine learning okay and this one is uh, the target audience are different so it is only for the non engineering student that is why we didn't put much of the machine learning so it is actually the same thing i have kept uh, two hours not one and a half hour because i have to go with some i mean deeper of the 
I mean, uh, maybe I can have more time and the, at the end, I can give you some brief of the machine learning, but not the tools. I mean, why it is needed, where you have to move from statistics to machine learning. So if you were there, in the, if you were there in the last workshop, so first portion, this portion is up, up going to be seen for you. Okay. So, yeah. So that is why they have to, they try to uh, diversify. So what they have done, so they were thinking that what should be the other product where they can launch, where they can introduce themselves. So you have to remember that since they have 75% or more uh, money, so, I mean share, so they have huge money. So the investment not is not a problem. So they were thinking that since they don't have any problem with the investment, so they have money, so they can produce anything, but they were thinking at that time, what should be the most, uh, I mean, which can give you the quick success, which of the particular uh, segment, which of the product. So that is what they were thinking. So they have gone to a, uh, a firm, a business, which uh, the market, the the companies, you know, I think that so there are some company where their work is to do this kind of data analysis, the market analysis, the market research firm they are known as, and they can give you the, I mean, if client go, can come to them and they can ask that this is this our problem and how to solve it, then these people can solve the problem with the help of data. So they have been to that particular firm, which is known as market research firm. And after that, so they have done a data-driven decision. They have taken a decision and in 2004, they have launched Bingo. So this is the first diversification ITC have made. Now you know ITC has hotels, ITC has different other brands, other product, food products. But this is the first time they have introduced something else other than cigarette. So now my question to you that why bingo? So everybody knows bingo in this room because, uh, okay, Vishal has some question. Yeah, I will get certificate after that, not meeting after that workshop. You have to be here till two hours, right? Okay. So I, the question is, again, I got the answer from uh, S. Abhishek. So the question was, I'm just repeating the question that, why bingo? So bingo is a potato wafer. So they have huge money, so they can sell it. They can produce anything and everything. They can come to the, I mean, they can sell it uh, in the country or maybe they want, they, if they want, they can export it also, but they have launched something which is known as a potato wafer and they have given the name as bingo. So I got, some yes so again i'm repeating that you will get a certificate after this session don't worry just not just after this session this definitely within few days you will get a certificate okay so i got some answer from vinit vinit has written that it can easily it can be easily sold in small outlet where cigarette is sold okay i got that and i got another answer i think that it can be uh, let me check. Okay, it has it was having a market demand. So anybody, any other? So it was having a market demand. I got the answer from S. Abhishek, and I got the answer from Vinay that it is uh, it can be sold easily in the small outlets where cigarettes is sold. Okay, let me check. I got something here. Yeah. So what? Uh, yes, if. So your question is, ma'am, if we study economics now, then, then what will be the future scope? That we'll discuss after, let me finish this, uh, this session. So go through that. And then this, this are, these are the personal questions. We are definitely, we, we can discuss after the session. Okay. So, okay, so I got some answer from Shion. Let me just read it. Uh, Sharon has written, it can be sold as, uh, easily like cigarette, it can great demand the market, also advertisement, advertising is possible without any restrictions. Okay, Kumud has written that it can be consumed by all, uh, all age groups, right? Tonushri has written because lastly, we come to satisfy our stomach and other side, it can be expected in many ways further. 
and that will result future profit too. Okay. So if I jot down your um, your answers, one is definitely it can be for each and I mean I can uh, we can sell it for anybody to anybody actually it can be from a very small children to elderly person also. Okay. Similarly, it can be actually it can be sold in the same outlet where we can they have already sold uh, they were selling cigarette so that is also. Yeah, that is a very good point. Avantika has written that potatoes have low cost. So obviously, it is very, very important to have, uh, I mean, they have money, but it is obviously good for a, a, a one entrepreneur to have profit, more profit. So to have more profit, they have to actually, what they have to do, they can uh, make the investment or cost smaller. So obviously, whatever be your revenue, the revenue minus cost would be more and they can have more profit. Yeah, so I, I got the answers from many of you. So these, all of these are the reason. So obviously, one reason is they, I got this, uh, this answer also from some of you that there are, I mean, no restrictions to sell potato wafers. So that is very, very important for them because for them, it is easy to, uh, sell something related to something where the, they can use the same raw material, which is tobacco. But it is not possible because whenever they are doing something with tobacco, they have the same kind of restriction. So they are just going out from this tobacco business. I mean, not out when I mean, they are to diversify. So bingo is the option which they can have. Number one reason, the investment is less because the input cost is less. Number two, they won't face this kind of restrictions from the government. Number three, they can sell it to a bigger uh, population irrespective of the age. Number four, that we have, they can sell it in the same outlet. Okay, so Abhishek Singh has written that uh, taxes are low on food products, yes. Ronak has written, uh, Ronak has written this less investment. Yeah, that, that I have told you. So these are the reasons, but the most important reason to find to launch Bingo was that, that they can sell this same put, I mean, put it away for in the same shop where they have or they were already selling cigarettes. So this brand awareness is very, very important. So the customers who are already a customers of cigarette, they already know the brand, which is ITC. So they have the faith over the band, brand. So it is easier to target these particular person, this particular segment of the customer, and they can eat. I mean, they can obviously buy bingo at a larger range. So this is the reason. This is the main reason along with other reasons. Obviously, all the reasons are right. But it's a combination of all the reasons, but we have, I'm going to show you the data-driven decision-making that is to, to justify the most important reason that is in the same shop, they can sell bingo. So this is the kind of uh, thinking they have, right? So this is the same kind of shop you can find. It's very common in our country that the cigarette shop, small, small shop, it is, I mean, Everywhere in the country, you can find this kind of shop and you can find that the potato wafers are hanging. Now, now come to the data. So obviously they have lots of, as you have said, all the points are there in their mind. So as you said, the taxes are less in the food products, so they can learn some other food products also. Because you have to remember, they don't have a problem with the funding. So they can do some other FMCG product also. But Ultimately, I mean, the, they have to make a super set and then make it smaller, smaller, smaller to find out the one sole product. And bingo, that potato ever is the winner over all the products they have thought that was there in their mind. That is the this kind of shop. So it's the same customer they should target. So let me show you that how data comes into play and why I'm saying that this is a success story of ITC with data-driven decision-making. So now my question is to you that, uh, so that is their target, right? So they have, they have the target of 75% or more of the cigarette smokers of India. So can you tell me that what is the percentage of cigarette smokers in India in 2002, three? Now, before that, I have to say something 
that that is there is a definition of smoker right this is a definition of that is the worldwide same definition so the definition of smoker is that person obviously he or she has to be more than 18 years of age so that person has to have cigarette i mean they should smoke cigarette at least 5 days a week and at least 3 sticks per day right so i'm saying this so what is the definition the definition is that particular person if i mean the smoker this definition is they have to have 5 days a week they should smoke and 3 sticks per day so five days a week and three sticks per day so this is a definition of smoker now tell me that what do you think that in 2002 3 what is the percentage of smoker in cigarette smoker in india any idea just guess some number what do you think so i'm repeating the question that what is the percentage of cigarette smoker in India in 2003-4. Yeah, Ronak has written 75 to 80, Ranujit 60, Mohit 30. Uh, I think, okay, 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 okay. So lots, lots of numbers. So I think minimum number I got 30, 25, I think Farooq has written. Okay, so these are the number. So let me ask to uh, Sakshi, you have written 85%. Sakshi, can you write, I mean, you are from which stream? Okay, so Shubhodip has written 25 to 30. Okay, Sakshi is from BCom. Right, so Sakshi has written 85, which is the highest. And Shivam Jaswal, you have written 85 to 90. Shivam, you are from which stream? If you can write, become or something else. So I am just specifically asking them because, okay, because uh, they have written the highest number. Right. So I, uh, Punima has written 26, 26 to 30. Actually, the number, the percentage is very, very less. It is actually 8.2%. Okay. Nekali has written. 25% male, 15% female, 55% approx. No, first thing is Meghali, you cannot add these two percent. You have done some calculation or something to get 55%, whatever. The answer is 8.2%. So my question was, what is the percentage of uh, cigarette smokers in India? Right, so, okay. So it is nine, Sachin has written. So you have, you have started from 90%, 85%. So what is the reason behind that? Reason is, uh, yeah, Farooq, it is actually that percentage is for the male adult uh, in 2003-04. So since you are thinking that why, is it, how is it possible that it is so, so less? So you have to remember that India is a poor country. It is still now, it is developing and cigarette, is a costly thing for the people. So if you go to the rural areas, they cannot afford cigarette. So if I'm, I will, I ask you a question about anything related to tobacco, it can be good, baby, then the percentage will be more. But my target, the IBC's target segment was cigarette. So cigarette smoking is still now, it is costly for Indian population. So that is why it is only 8.2. Because at that time, only 23% of Indian population is, I mean, in the residing in the cities. So again, in the city also, everybody cannot afford cigarette. So it is very, very less, right? No, 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 Farooq, it is not the dot for every form because we are, we are discussing the case of ITC. So ITC's target customers are the those people who are the cigarette smokers, not the others, right? Yeah, Nidhi, uh, what's the percentage in 2020? I need to check, but I have, uh, I, ha I think it is lesser now, not due to this, uh, obviously people have more money, but the 
due to some awareness or something, it is less than 8.2% now. So I need to check once. You can also check and tell me. Okay. Right. So this 8.2%, you were thinking that it is a small number, but this is not a small number because this eight point our think up think about our population. It's a huge population, right? So this 8.2% of this huge Indian population is also four crore almost. So think those four crore people and 75% of the four crore people, so three, three crore people are the customer, already customer of cigarette. So they know the brand, right? So that is the first thing. So I'm going deeper into the data. So first thing we have to, they have to search for the definition of the uh, smoker. So that is available everywhere. Then they got this 8.2% with a secondary survey. Now, you know what is primary survey and what is secondary survey? Primary survey means, primary data means you have to go and you have to ask people to get answers. Secondary means somebody has done the calculation, somebody has done the, I mean, gathered the number, you have to just, you have to take help from that. So this is called secondary. So this 8.2% they got from the secondary data source, right? And they understood that 8.2% is not a small number because it is a country like India. So it is a four crore uh, smokers. Now, after that, they have some other, uh, calculation. So they got some other statistics that the statistics are, let me go here. Yeah. So this is 8.2% I have told, that is the male smoker, uh, adult male smoker, uh, cigarette smokers in 2002. Now, this 8.2 was translated into four crore smokers. So now they have checked with the primary survey that what is the mode of purchase? Now mode of purchase means it is a, is it a stick purchase or is it a pack? That means when people go to the shop to buy a cigarette, whether they are going for purchase of a full pack of cigarettes or maybe loose sticks. So they have done a primary survey and they got that maximum people in India goes and buys a I mean, the stick, not a pack. Again, the same reason, it is due to the low purchasing power. So 94% of the cigarette smoker, 94% of the cigarette smoker, they go and buy sticks and only 6% of the cigarette smokers, they go and buy pack. Now, this, this average smoking behavior, again, this is not for everybody, but this is the mode. You know, if you have a little bit of idea of the statistics, you, you understand what is mean, median and mode. So mode means the highest frequency. So most of the people, when they go to the shop, I mean, sorry, average smoking behavior per day is 10 states. So they go and important, one important data is that normally the mode of purchase is two sticks per occasion. So let me, I mean, jot down all these three informations. Number one, 94% of the Indian smokers, cigarette smokers, they buy sticks. How many sticks per visit? Two sticks. And how many, sti how many sticks they consume normally in a day? That is 10. So again, you, it, is not, it is not same for everybody, but you understood that I am, this is the average for entire country. So this is the average of four crore smokers, right? So that is why this is the mode of the purchasing behavior, right? Okay, so Nidhi's uh, question that we answer is that what is the primary survey and the secondary one? The secondary primary is a survey. Suppose I want to know something about uh, the Indian students, undergraduate students, right? So I can go to the different websites available where I can get some idea. I suppose a sociodemographic uh, pattern of Indian students. So I can go to census as well. I can get there. I mean, the, this particular age group and I can find different socio-demographic pattern. So I can have different other NSSO and other sources of data also. So these are the secondary sources. And primary means if I'm going to you or I'm going to give some uh, form and you are just filling up and return it to me, this is called the primary survey. So primary survey means I'm doing the research, I'm doing the data collection for my own research. Secondary means somebody has done it already, I'm just taking help from there. So, okay, Nidhi. 
Okay, so let me come back here. So just look at the numbers. The average smoking behavior is 10 sticks a day. Per visit, they normally buy two, two sticks. So how many times they have to go to the shop? They have to go five times. So they have to go five times, right? So this number is very, very important. So again, it is, we can have some outliers. Outliers means some exception, but this is a general version, right? So they have to go five times. So if five times in a day, that means 1800 zero zero times in a year. So if you multiply it with 365, it is 1800. Zero zero. Now, if it is any other product, suppose it is shampoo or, uh, or soap or any kind of FMCG product, normally we visit to a shop maximum twice a month, maybe in general. Again, I'm taking the average. So if maximum twice a month means it is actually 24 times a year. So think about the difference. So what I have said that if it is cigarette, they are going to that particular shop in 150 times a month or 1800 times a year. But if it is any other FMCG product, so their behavior can be like that. So they can visit just one to two times per month that means 12 to 24 times per year. So think that think think the difference between this 1800 zero zero and 24. So that is their, there lies the decision making. So they have said that, okay, I got lots of uh, Q&A session also, the Q&A, lots of things also, so 30%, okay. So I think you got the answers. So this is the difference and that is their, that was their target. So they thought that, so since it is 1800 times and others, any other thing, it is 24 times. So let us jump into that particular sec. So they have jumped and they have created potato wafer. Obviously potato wafer, some other advantages as you have discussed that the raw material cost is lesser. Even that time the uh, competition was also lesser because the lays are that time the it's the initial period of lays and we had uncle chips that time but the branded uh, uh, wafers are lesser at that time so competition was lesser so with, uh, with that they have launched this potato wafer right and so if suppose it is not possible to keep this particular uh, lays in all the shops around India, but they can target 50% of the shop maybe. Now you think in 50% of the shops, cigarette shops in India, lays are hanging over there. This three core people who already know that they are, that is a brand, there's a, you can have a faith on the brand, which is IPC. So there can be some impulse buying. What is the meaning of impulse buying? That you, you don't have the plan, but after going to the, shop you can find something new and you can have a try so this is called impulse buying so there can be some impulse buying there can be some repeat obviously so with that they have a hundred crore business so obviously that was the right decision and yes Faruk you're right so this is called uh, impulse buying so no need no plan just buying yeah so and uh, we have, if you are, if you have any knowledge of that economics, you can find there's a famous law, which is known as Say's Law, Say is the name of the economist, that supply creates its own demand. So this is like that. So you don't have any demand initially, but there are supplies you can find. Normally when we visit to the shops, I mean, uh, pantaloons or Spencers, many times we go by that, the supply is there. So we think, chalo, ye le le de so this is called supply creates its own demand. So out of, so this story tells us that we have a, I mean, ITC understood that there is a scope of 100 crore business of Bingo. So obviously they have lost that. So not only launching, they have to create the sustainability of, of course. So that is why they have done something more. So first they have created colorful pack. They have created the, I mean, different kinds of, crazy mindless ads. So that is the problem with the cigarette segment. So they can find that it is very easy to give different kinds of ads. 
and they have created this mad angle. So nowadays it is synonymous almost. So mad angles, if somebody says, you can understand what's bingo. So that is first time they have created this kind of a statement actually, this is known as the mad angles. They have introduced different flavor. Nowadays you can have different flavors for Lay's and other companies as well, but they have started it. And they have done attract attractive packaging. So bingo is a famous brand until now it is a, I mean, top one or two potato wafer in India. So this is a success story of with data. So you can understand not hardcore data. We didn't do anything, anything of statistics, only some calculation. So you need to find out the data first, and then you need to go through the simple calculation. Sometimes it's obviously you have the knowledge uh, if you have the knowledge of statistics, if you have a knowledge of machine learning and other stuff, so you can do deep, deep calculations. So obviously your, your outcomes would be richer, but you can do like that. So, so this is our first discussion of today's session that how this is a success story, how only a small data and uh, story behind data can give you success. Now the next portion is the most important portion. And here actually, uh, if I can do it physically, this particular workshop, I tell you to do along with me. So now it is not possible, but just go through me. I will do this thing, but you have to just discuss and give me some idea I can do with the data set, right? Yeah, honestly, I couldn't get your point that why you have written that. Yes, ma'am, that's what I told that it can be expanded. I think, Aja, you have, you, have, you have written that no? initially that why bingo, I think that is what you are writing. Yeah. So obviously, first you need to understand as an entrepreneur, as a businessman, you have to find out the uh, product. Then you have to obviously to sustain, to have to have increase in the number you have to do lots of this, lots of things. And Bingo has this kind of a possibility and opportunity, right? So now let me go to that. So our today's main discussion is about a case. So I'm going to give you a case. First, let me uh, give you the uh, brief of the case. And then I'm going to show you the Excel where the numbers are written. So you have to go through the Excel one to another one sheet to another, and you have to find out what are the problems exactly, right? So this is our, so this is the main thing of a session. How can I start a chemical and pharmaceutical company, uh, Atish? Let, let us discuss this thing after the thing again, I'm saying that if you have some question, so I don't, if I have some idea that I can give you some idea maybe. So if we see, uh, you can, Give me anything I can connect it to the data because if you're going to start any company or you have to launch anything, again, you have to start with the data. How we can do that, that I will discuss. Let me finish it first. So this is our case where, where I need your help. So suppose this is a key background. So there are two modern format retail stores, right? Like Big Buzzer, Spencer's or more. Actually, this is a story of Spencer's. So both the stores are almost of the same size. Both sell white, like staple, like FMCG, apparel, electronics, goods, everything. Both the stores have been operational for three plus years. So the problem is with store two. So store, store one is a highly profitable store, but store two is a loss making store, right? So just assume that store two is our client. So store two is our client and we, I mean, me and you, all of you, we are, we are the uh, market research analyst or market or data scientist or the business analyst, right? So we have to tell them how, they, what is their problem? And then we can, we have to suggest them that how they can change their position. So they can improve their position from maybe from the loss, they can have some profit. So again, I'm repeating, these are the two modern format retail have visited any of this modern format retail store like Big Bazaar, Spencer, actually Pantaloon, Shop, Shopper Stop. These are the modern format stores. Now, here we have this is a story of two stores because we have to compare between the two stores to understand that what is the problem of store two. 
So both the stores are of same size and they are selling a wide range of products like staples, FMCG, apparels, electronics, good everything. Both of them are operational in the same city for three plus years. So they have almost everything is same, but we can find that store one is a highly profitable store, but store two is a loss making store. So now store two, suppose come to us and uh, asking for our help. So we need to find for first, we need to ask for some data, right? So before going to that, so whenever again, if you are going to be a data analyst or business analyst, first thing you have to ask from the client that what give us some data. So you have to understand what are the relevant information you need. Hmm? Yes, Faduk. So we are going to do the analysis of data just now. So let me just go through the background. So this look at this is the data of the financial year 2015-16. The total sales of store one is 29.8 crores and the profit is 2.9 crore. On the other hand, store two, the total sales is 13.1 crore and they have a profit of minus 0.5 crores. You can understand they are making loss. So that is the problem of this case. Now, so can you tell me what is, what is the speciality of modern format outlet? So everybody has visited some of the modern format store. So anybody, can you tell, uh, tell me that what is the, what is the speciality of modern format store? You can just write it in the chat box. One stop solution, Abhantika has written, Vineet has written. Can, I think it is, can easily move and touch products, yeah. Pre, so Priya, I can uh, tell you. So, okay, so we have lots of things. It looks uh, more compelling, digital billing, availability of all FMCG goods, uh, yeah, special discounts, right? Availability online also, available online also. Okay, so we got, um, yeah, Farooq, so we got all the, I got the point. So the thing is that, yeah, consumer convenience, Yes, and wide range of products. So right, so if I can go one by one, so first thing is obviously under one roof, you can have a huge range of product, different brands. Okay, so Ashish has, Atish has written it is cheaper. It may not be cheaper always Atish, but we can, we can find different range of product. That's true that we can have a, if it is a branded product, maybe it's costlier, but you can have a cheaper brand also available there maybe. Okay, so yeah, they, they, they buy in bulk, I think it would be, we get discounts, right. So number one is we have lots of product, lots of brand in under one roof. Number two is we can just go through that, we can check, we can feel actually we can, we can if it is a dress, we can wear it also before buying. So obviously it is the best possible thing which we can do. We can find lots and lots of different discounts. Have some somebody else, Chavan has written if there is a price drop or anything you can find. So obviously we can go through the uh, one corner to another corner to find out our our product, which I need actually. Yeah, so plenty of offers and that digital billing. I think Vinit has written that is all also very important. That whatever you are buying. So everything, everything, they can you remember? I think you know that the lowest long bills are given from the expenses. So every time you can go and they have the data actually that if suppose, suppose Proshun. Okay, so Proshun has written that variety of brands. So suppose Proshun has bought something product X. So they can understand that Proshun has bought all other things. Though they can combine that this is the nature of that particular customer whose name is Proshun that he is, if he is buying product X, he is also going to buy product Y or product Z. So this is called the association analysis. So they can do with the help of these data. So if, if you go to any Kirana shop, na, so you can ask that, uh, wo, small, small shops, hota hai, Kirana shops, you can go and ask to the shopkeeper that from the beginning, how many Dove shop, soap or how many Dove shampoo you have sold. So just count because he knows everything where you have he has kept how many dove shops soaps and all. 
तो बता देगा लेकिन इफ यू कैन आस्क थेम दैट कैन यू टेल मी दैट हु द कस्टमर्स हु हैव बॉट बॉट डव सोप वेदर ही और शी इज आल्सो बाइंग डव शैम्पू और नॉट सो वो जो पैरामीटर है इज अ एसोसिएशन दैट यू कैन नॉट गेट फ्रॉम द किराना शॉप बट दैट यू कैन गेट फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर shop of the i mean the modern format retail stores because they have kept all the things and it is known as the uh, automated billing system so that is very important similarly they can understand uh, that the footfall of in the in the shop so maybe we visit the shop we may not buy anything but they have the they have this thing in, in the gate so they can understand that who have visited their shop and at which time exactly so these are very very important thing because we need to have the data from them to understand that so every customer can move around and store and see as you have see that uh, they can uh, they can touch and feel the items which have been stocked there then the billing is automated which is very very important so that is why in our data set also i am going to show you lots of data which you can use now uh, so this is very important thing i think you may not have the knowledge of this private level brand so anybody do you have any idea what is known as private level brand have you heard about private level brand so private level brand is uh, i think i got something made by the same store yeah vivek you are absolutely right vivek we need it is a in house product so if you go to the spencers you can find the uh, there are some fruit juice made by spencers maida atta made by spencers so these are known as private level brand or store brands and these are very very important for the profitability so first thing you have to understand that they have a very small profit margin especially for this staple the food items because the, these are cheaper actually and they have to give lots of discounts and offers so that is why their profit margin would be very less right now if they can produce this kind of same product under their own brand name then they can have little bit of higher profit margin so while we are going to discuss with the data you have to understand that if it is a private level brand it is better for a store right now can you tell me that why is it why is it so that if there is a private level brand then um, you have uh siddharth amazon brands no siddharth we are we are talking about only the uh, retail stores right so in retail stores if you move to the to the i mean store like spencer you can find something from the same brand similarly if it is more or in the pantaloons also you can find some of this so it's not the amazon brands okay so my question was that what is the reason that i'm saying that if there is a they can launch a private level brand and that is good for their profitability can you tell me okay private level brand we have more margins and ultimately more profit advantage of private level brands is that they do not include specific marketing cost meghali has written that okay less advertisement advertising cost impulse buying yeah marketing less less production cost um, pratik production cost would be same it is not less na because they are making same thing obviously quality they have to maintain so cost of production is less that is not true but what are the other things you have written all of you that is true so this is very impulse buying to we have already discussed and the at vivek and uh, uh meghali and yeah meghali has written that advertisement cost is lesser so you have, you can understand that is a very good point that uh you cannot find the advertisement for spencers fruit juice you can find the advertisement for spencers so they are making advertisement for the main brand so people are visiting and there they can find the same product from the same brand and obviously you have the faith brand loyalty brand awareness and the impulse buying so obviously it would be more and the first point is obviously more because they don't have to share their profit so it is so two main uh, important reason that why i have said that private level brand is a good thing for a retail store number one is they don't have to put 
uh, advertisement separately so that this cost is less. So you know that as cost is less, profit will be more. And similarly, they don't have to uh, give this profit share to the other brand because it's the same brand. So that is also you have to remember, okay? So this thing you have to remember after while we discuss this thing. And there is something, it is there in the data set. So this is the meaning of the catchment area. So catchment area means it is, uh, you can find in our data set Excel. So if it is within two kilometer, that means where the customers are kind coming to the shop, right? So if they're, they're coming from the area within two kilometers of the store, that is called primary catchment. If it is two to five kilometer, then it is secondary catchment. Tertiary means five to 10 and beyond tertiary is more than 10 kilometers. So these are important things which are there in our data set and we have to discuss on that. So these are the data I'm going to show you. So one is the number of footfall, one is the number of bill generated and we have the loyalty card users data. Can you tell me what is a loyalty card users? I think all of us, maybe most of us are the loyalty card users of any one or two of the private retail shop. So can you tell me that? So what is the meaning of, uh, yes, it is old customer. Actually, if you, I think we have a green card for pantaloons. So every time you visit, they will ask you for some that these, this is the loyalty card. I mean, the card, you can have it because after that you can, you are going to get lots of messages and mails that we have some, he has a privileged customers. So if there is some uh, rebate or some discounts, we are going to get this message earlier. So that is the benefit from our end. They have the benefit also. Yeah, reward points. So these are the catch point to get people, but they have the benefit that they can get the data. So main thing, every this world is going with the help of the data. So absolutely right, Meghali. So this is nothing but the data collection. So they are giving us different kinds of uh, reward points and privileged customers and in exchange, they are getting data from us. So we have a, this kind of data also in our Excel. So because other than that, we cannot have that. So if you can ask any Kirana shop, they don't have this kind of uh, small, small gender, age, occupation. This data you cannot find in the retail store. So you can find in this, uh, so you cannot find in the Kirana shop, but you can find in the retail store due to this loyalty card customer thing. Okay, so let me now go to the, Excel sheet. So I'm going to visit one to another sheet and I'm just going to ask you questions. So remember, these are the information which you have to use to think. And you have to understand that the basic question is for our client, our client is stone number two, not stone number one, but I have data for both because we have to compare and then only we can suggest, right? So we are going to keep the suggestion at the end, not now. So initially we have to go through data and think, try to understand what is the problem of store number two, right? So I'm going to the Excel now. Okay, so this is our first sheet of the data. So first your client has, suppose already they can come to us and I have we have told them that we have asked for some data. So they have given us the six different segments of data, six different categories of data. So this is the first one, right? So the first data they have shown, you can find that we have a annual revenue, store number one and store number two. We have the footfall data, stone number one, stone number two, and we have the bill generated data of stone number one versus stone number two. So this is the year of 2015 to 16 financial year. So April 2015 to March 2016, right? So just look into the data. First tell me that footfall and bill generated, are they same or they are different? If different, what is the connection in between these two? So footfall data, and bill generated data. Footfall data is Nidhi. Footfall data is how many people are coming and visiting their shop. So this is called footfall data. Yeah. So my question is, 
Bo, uh, Shubhrodeep. Yeah, both are bored in store number one. I know. I, I first my question is that what is the if what do you think that footfall data and this data that uh, bill generated data are they same or different? That's my question. I mean, should it be same or do you have any connection over for, with these two? What do you think? Yeah, they are different. Which one should be more? Footfall or bill generated? Meghali, is it bill generated? Agreed, others? Okay. So Nidhi and Meghali has the same answer that uh, bill generated is the more, I mean, should be more and Pratik has written its footfall. Yeah, so Shayon Shubhrodeep, I got the right answer. So Nidhi and Meghali just listen to us. The first of all, you have to visit, uh, then only you can buy. So your footfall is a superset and the bill generated, that number is a subset of that. Because without visiting the shop, I'm not considering the online shopping here, right? So first you need to go there, visit the shop. And in this kind of shop, it is very common that I can visit the shop with my family, with my friends, but I'm only buying. So if I'm visiting the shop with three of my friends, so four is the number of footfall. And suppose I'm only buying something. So one is the number of bill generation. It's also possible that I have visited, but I have not bought anything. Right? So that is why this footfall data is a superset and the bill generated is the subset. Right? And this is the annual revenue. So this is the most important thing, the first table, because if the revenue is more, I can, can understand the cost is almost same for both the stores because they are in the same city, they have the same size, they have the same uh, a, or age of three plus year. So this revenue is most important. So I can understand, as Shubhradeep was saying, uh, written, that uh, for both of this, footfall, store one is more than store two. For bill generated, store one is more than store two. And obviously for the annual revenue, store one is more than store two. So the first problem is people are not coming in that store that we can find from this uh, footfall data. So it's very clear that people coming, so this data I'm talking about, so people are coming less. Now you have to find out the bill generated is also less. Now how to find out this, this is a term which is known as conversion ratio. So what is conversion ratio? Conversion ratio is the uh, ratio of bill generated and number of footfall. So conversion ratio is a term. So in the numerator, we have bill generated, and in denominator, we have footfall. So people who are coming, whether they are buying something or not, that is very, very important, we need to understand. Now I'm asking to you, okay, so Nidhi has some point, just let me read it out. Nidhi has written because ma'am, I was thinking that it is not necessary now that Whoever is coming in the shop, they will buy. So, huh, that, is the, that is the point, Nadir, that people are coming. So whoever coming, that means that is the footfall. Okay, Suppose 10 people are, are visited this particular shop in today's morning. So 10 is the footfall. Lekin, it is possible, as you have written, that they may not buy. So maybe out of these 10 people, 8 of them have bought something. So a conversion ratio, kya ho jayega? this is 8 by 10. So that means this bill, bill generation is the number of people who have bought something. So as per our example, this is eight. And how many people have visited? This is 10. So obviously this footfall is a higher number than the bill generation. It cannot be possible no, that you have bill generation 10 and eight, eight people has visited. So that is why this number of bill generated is always a subset of number of people who have visited that particular store, okay? So I need your idea that how to get this conversion ratio. Can you tell me how to calculate this conversion ratio from this two table? So what do we have to do? We have to take the average 
of all the four columns, right? And then we have to divide. So after dividing that, so what we have to divide? Bill generated for store one divided by footfall of store one and bill generated of store two divided by footfall of store two. If I do that, then I can get the numbers. So I can understand that what is the, so then I can understand that what is the difference in the conversion ratio. So first thing from the data itself, it's very clear. We can understand that the footfall is lesser, bill generated is lesser. So you have to just find out the ratio. So if you have to find out the ratio, what you have to do, you have to take the average of all these uh, four columns. So let me show you one. So I have to find out the average of the first column. So this is the average of the footfall of stone number one. Similarly, I have to do the same thing for stone number two. So I need these data. So I have just taken, I've selected that. So this is the average of stone number two of footfall. I have to do the same thing for bill generation. So average of bill generation of stone number one and average of bill generation of stone number two. So these are the four averages and then we have to find out this conversion ratio. So what I have to do, I have to just divide it. So is equal to, I have to take this, I'm checking for stone number one divided by this. So this is the value for stone number one. Let me find out stone number two here. So is equal to, I have to write this first, divided by this. So if you look into the data, so one is 66.6, this is 66% around, and this is 57%. So if I write in only the number, so the first one is 67, actually 66.6 .6 would be there. So this is 66, 67% for stone number one. For stone number two, it is 57%. So look, there is a gap of 10%. So I didn't do any statistics, but normal calculation can give, I the, give me the idea. So there are, first problem of stone number two is people are not coming. Second problem who are coming, 67% for stone number one, that if 100 people are coming, 67 are buying something. For stone number two, this is almost half. So if 100 people are coming to visit, the shop 57 only buying something. So that is the second problem. And third problem is look into the annual revenue. So if I can add this, the total number of bill and then annual revenue divided by total number of bill gives us the average bill value. So there also you can find a huge difference. It's easy to <clears throat> from that also. So if I can just add them, <clears throat> so you're going to get a value <clears throat> and so I'm not doing this average I'm taking the total so what I can do I can just divide multiply it's easier to go with that <clears throat> Sorry. so this 772439 is the total valuation of the bill similarly here also I can do the same thing so I'm just dividing it back with uh, multiplying it by 12 because I have divided by 12, taking the average, right? So now look into that, I have to, con I'm just dividing this total revenue and this total bill value, right? Then also you can check this, the first revenue, the average amount of the bill for the first form, first store is much more than the average number of bill for the second store. So that means what we got is, First problem of stone number two is the footfall is less. Second problem is the conversion ratio is less. And third problem is that people who are buying something, they also are not buying at a good amount. So that is also a problem. So people are buying, but buying less. So they have to control all of these things. So they have to do something by which they can get more people inside the store, number one. Number two, they have to tell them, they have to push them to buy something. So not only visit, they have to buy something. And number three, they have to push them to buy a uh, uh, more valuable thing. So, um, 
what is it? What is your name? Atrikash. At Atrika, I think so. Whatever. Written that, uh, ma'am, I cannot control footfall. No, I cannot. I cannot push. I cannot actually pull people and push it inside of my store. That I cannot do. But I can do different kinds of attractive advertisement. I can put. I can give different offer. I can actually target the customer. If I go through the next sheet, you can understand who are coming to the shop and who are not. So then you can actually target your customer and give them different kinds of attractive things to on to by which you can you can have them inside your store. Obviously, you are not going to. I mean, in that way, you cannot can control, but indirect way we can control, right? So let me jump to this sheet number three. Then I think it's it would be easier for you to understand. So this is. This is a demography of some loyalty customers. You can understand this loyalty customer is a part of the people who are coming and visiting the store, right? So this is very important to understand. Yes, Shayan has some idea. So we're discussing the ideas later. So first of all, this is a demography, right? So we have to compare the store one and store two in terms of the demography of the people who are coming to the shop. Now here we are using something that is known as normalization. So if maybe you have heard normalization. So normalization we do with some different objective. Here what we are going to do is this 50% and 70%. So male who are visited in the shop, 50% for store number one and 70% is for store number two. So to find it better, that what is the difference? What I have to do, I have to convert it into this with this 53. So I have to make this 53, 47, which is our, this cell, which is the average of all, all stores over India, right? So you have to convert it at a part of this 53%, 47%. Then you can understand that whether 50% is below average, you can understand from here also that 50% is below average because 53 is the average and 70% is above average. But what is the difference from 100? So that we need to find, and this method is known as normalization. So what we have to go, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the calculation by which my D column, this D column becomes 100% for all, right? Because if it is, if the base is 100, it would be easier for us to understand the ups and downs of the data. So if I have to make this 100, that means I have to divide this 53 by 53. So what I'm going to do is, I have to divide this 50 by 53. That means if I divide 53 by 53, so I have to do the same thing for the entire first row, right? So my this calculation, which is known as a method of normalization, what I'm doing, I'm taking this 50 and I'm dividing it with 53, right? So this 94.33% is the number of male percentage of male visited the shop. So if I can just drag it down, I'm going to get all the values. So you can find this, these are not, because no values are there, that is why it is coming like that. So I have to just, so let it be uh, two digit after decimal. So these are the numbers for store number one after making it normalized. So now let us do the same thing for store number two. So what I have to do, I have to divide this 70%, this is for store number two, by this 53% because I'm going to make it the same. So this is the value. So again, I, what I have to do, I have to just drag it for all of the other cells. So I'm dragging this, sorry. So these are the number. And again, I have to just make it make it smaller. Now just look at these two things. So first of all, there is a problem in the demography of the customer gender-wise. For store one, 94.34% are male and 132.08% is that same thing for store number two. When I'm coming to female, it is 106.6% approximately for store number one and 63% for store number two. Similarly, look into the age profile of the customers. 
for stone number one, below 25% is 66%, sorry, below 25 years is 66%. For stone number two, it is 166.67%. 25 to 34 years, 105% for stone number one and 75% in stone number two. If we just check through this last one, 55 years and plus, it is 80% for stone number one, 150% for stone number two. Similarly, if the occupation you check that for housewife, for, sorry, for students and unemployed, it is 140%, that means 40% above average for stone number two and 30% below average for stone number one. So now look into that. Can you tell me that what is the, what is the difficulty from this, this particular uh, calculation? Can you get some problem of stone number two? Because they are our client. So let us know that what are the difficulties they are having. Now we can compare uh, because look at the gender first. The, the people, the male people are coming to stone number two, that is 32% above average. And for stone number one, it is 6% below average. For female, it is 6% above average for stone number one and stone number two, it is lesser. Right. So first go through this gender. So normally we know that if we can get more female, yeah, yeah, Pratik, you're right. So if you get, get, get more female in the shop, then you are, your total bill value would be more because not only that, that normally people think that uh, the women are buying, normally buy more, not for that also. For uh, if one particular, I mean, one uh, housewife or one particular lady is visiting mm -hmm. your shop, that means she has to buy for her children, for the family. So obviously, if your target should be as a store of this particular, this kind of retail store, that you should have more female, not more male. So that is one problem, maybe, for store number two. Similarly, I got the different uh, problems. Yeah, so this is very important point, Shion, that in store number two, who are coming more below for 25 years of age and above 55 years of age? So if it is below 25 years of age, and again, they are students and unemployed, so obviously they don't have the purchasing power. So they are visiting the shop, but they cannot buy more, right? So that is why the, the conversion ratio is less. Similarly, if it is more than 55 years of age, they may have the money, but they don't have this much urge of, because the most maximum uh, Purchasing power and maximum propensity to consume you can find in the middle age where it is 25 to 54, 55. And that is the segment which are coming to stone number one, not to stone number two. Similarly, the occupation wise also you can find that stone number two, mostly the people who are students and unemployed, they are visiting. So that is the problem. Yes, so it, by occupation stone number one, as Vinita has written, that housewives are more. So we can understand how, if housewives are coming to visit your shop, that means they have to they have to buy more, right? Because they have to buy for their entire family. So these are the problem. We can understand that that is the basic problem of stone number two that they cannot attract the people who have the higher purchasing power. So absolutely, Shubhodev is right. So they have to target, they have to attract more people, either with more need. So uh, housewives, they may not have the purchasing power, but they have the need, right? Or the people who have more purchasing power. So that is the second problem we have identified from this particular uh, sheet. Now, the next two sheets are the 200 customers Bill gen billing, I mean, from the bill generation, we have got this. So sheet four is for stone number one, and sheet five is the same for stone number two. It is the same column. Just look into that. So, this is uh, we have two, 200 rows. Okay, so in future, whenever you have to do some kind of data, suppose you want to do MBA, then you have to do internship. Internship is nothing but you have to deal with the data, and you are going to get this kind of a structure of the data set. So, all the customers who you are going to talk, that should be the row. And all the different uh, questions that is there in the questionnaire, that should be the column. 
So here also, this you can find the name of the customers are just arbitrary, nothing random written number, some some letters. So these are the they are the two hundred data set of the loyalty card customers of uh, both the stores, and these are the important things. So these are the bill value. These are the FM, whether they are buying FMCG product, whether they are buying apparel or electronics, or they are buying others, whether they are buying private level and the value of the private level and the catchment area, as I have said that this is known as catchment area. So this other FMCG and apparel, if I add it, it would be your bill value, right? And again, you have to remember that the profit margin is highest for this apparel or electronics because these are the costly product and profit margin is lowest in case of FMCG and staple because these are the, I mean, there is a cheaper product. Similarly, look into this too. So this is nothing but if you have private level, yes, that means you have some numbers beside that. So zero and one means whether you are buying something from private level or not. Zero means we are not buying. One means we have bought something from private level. So obviously if it is yes, one, that means it is something, the value is also given. So how much you have bought, how many, what is the bill value? That is 450. So if it is one, how much you have bought? That is 1000, right? And the catchment area, as I have mentioned, one means within two kilometer, two means two to five kilometer, three means five to 10 kilometers, and four means beyond 10 kilometers. So these are the data. And we have two. Obviously, you can find lots of the numbers. We can find lots of the things. So I'm going to show you one very uh, important and easy thing, not statistics again, only some number, that is to find out a pivot table or pivot table. So that is enough here also you can understand some, I mean, uh, segment or categories, uh, uh, some, some uh, kind of a structure of buying. So what I have to do, just look into that, I have to go to insert, right? In insert, in the northwest column corner, you can find this pivot table. So you have to just click in on this. Then you have to just... This is, you can find, this is data table or range is given. So I have to click for the entire range because the, uh, the these things are very important that the headings, because otherwise you cannot form the pivot table. So I'm just selecting all the data along with the heading and I'm going to the new worksheet. So I'm clicking on the new worksheet sheet I have been here. So this is our, here I have to make the pivot tip. So what I'm going to take is, I'm taking that whether people are buying private level or not, right? And so this is one thing I need. Second thing I need that whether they are buying private level of FMCG or private level of apparel or private level of others. Now I need only private level as the row heading and all the other headings should be in the column. So this private level, I'm taking this in the row. Now look at this table. So this is a table for stone number one. So zero means no private level. One means yes, private level. And look at the number. This is a stone number one. So if you just compare this apparel and electronics. So this apparel and electronic is highest among all of this. So I'm just highlighting this. So look, I, I have told you that the profit margin is maximum in, in case of apparel and electronics and profit margin would be more if you are buying from private level. So most of the people who are coming to this particular shop, store number one, they are going for private level and they are going to buy more of apparel and electronics. So obviously their profit margin would be more. So let us do the same thing for store number two and then only I can you can find the gap between these two stores. So to go to store number two, I have to go to sheet number five. So the same sheet, uh, the same same column, same 200 people, not the same people. They are the people they are visiting store number two. So again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm clicking on insert, going to the pivot table and then I have to uh, select the entire data set along with the heading, which is very, very important. So I'm selecting the entire data set. I'm clicking on the new worksheet, okay. 
So here also I'm going to do the same thing. I need FMCG, I need private level, I need apparel, I need other. And I'm keeping this private level into the row. So look at this number now. So if you remember the number for stone number one, and this is the number for stone number two. So there we have 50,000 something. And here, if it is a private level and apparel and electronics, it is only 4,000 something. So you can understand who are going to visit in store number two, they are buying private level, but more in this category of staple and FMCG. So which is obviously, it is not giving them more profit. So you, we, we can find from there that we have to focus, store number two has to focus more and more in for this electronic. So this is again, I'm showing this, this is for store number one. So if you total also, you can find the total of this uh, electronics is 60,000. And if it is store number two, the total is 37,000. So the most important area where the profit margin is maximum, they have to focus on that. So that is missing also. And the last thing I want to show that whether it is a catchment area and the bill value. So that, that is also important. So let me go with that. So now I'm making a new pivot table where I'm putting catchment area and bill value. So people are coming from which area? So this catchment area I'm keeping in the row. So this is the story of store number two. So these are the numbers you can find. So catchment area one, that means within five kilo, within two, two kilometer number of people are 15,000, then 33, 35 and 11,000. Now let me do the same thing for stone number one. Again, I have to make this unchecked. So I'm taking bill value and catchment area. So I'm keeping this catchment area in the row. Now look at the number. So these numbers are 70,000 for uh, within two kilometer, 35,000, two to five kilometer, 13,000, five to 10 kilometer and beyond 10 kilometer, it is only 8,000. So I'm just copying this in the same sheet. Yeah. So now you can check and take the number that for stone number one. So this is stone number one, right? So this is a normal pattern. You can find that most people who are visiting in the shop, they, they are near about same locality. And then gradually it goes down. But stone number two is something weird that people are not coming from that particular area itself. So people are coming from two to five kilometer, mostly five to 10 kilometer. So that is also a problem because people are coming from far means if after some day there is some new store in that area, then those people are not going to come again. Similarly, there is some problem in that particular locality or maybe in particular store that they cannot attract the local people. So these are the problems. So we have all, almost done with our problem area. Uh, what you have written, but with the data like this, how can we say which shop will make more profit? So yeah, so from the data itself, I am saying that I can find that the profitability is less for, for store number two. So what I'm doing is we are revealing the data set to understand the problem, right? And after understanding the problem, then only we can give some suggestion. So as a business analyst, or maybe if you are going to do something like, uh, if, you, if you are going to take MBA with marketing also, then also you have to nurture with the numbers and you have to come out with some solution, right? Maybe not for other clients, maybe for your own company that these are the lacking area, there you have to focus. So that is what we are doing here. So out of these a whole uh, exercise, which we have done, we got some, some points that number one, you can find that their footfall is less. So that is the first thing we got, that footfall is less. Second thing is we got that conversion ratio is red, less. We got the average bill value is less. So these are the three important problems. So problem is here, problem is here, and problem is here. So people are not coming. Who are coming, they are not buying enough. They are, who are buying, they are not buying a profitable product, right? So we got the same thing. 
we got the problem that their male customer is less. Their customers with the purchasing power is less. So that we got. And we got that their problem is lying because they are electronics and apparel. This is also less. Their private level brand, this is also less. And thirdly, we got that the people are not coming with the primary catchment area. So the local people, local people are not coming. So that is also less. So these are the problem area we can find from this data. So you can understand that if we have more knowledge, if you have knowledge of actual statistics, if you have knowledge beyond statistics to machine learning, so you can do lots of other calculation with the same data set and you can find something extra. But here also it is, it is not, it's, it's enough to find, if, if, to give some suggestion. So now I'm asking you that if these are the problem, then what could be the suggestion? One by one, if you can give the suggestion to our client, store number two. Yeah, so anybody have any suggestion what you want to tell to store number two, what they have to do to make, to convert themselves from a loss making store to a profit making store. Okay, so Shubhradeep has the idea, of course, the store number two has to target more local, but how? To increase the productivity. Uh, it is not productivity. They have to, they are not producing electronics and appliances. They have to sell it more. Okay, so Pratik has written that more offers and discount. Okay, something extra. So first of all, obviously we have to target more local customers. So we have to go actually, they, they should visit their, their home to understand what they are, what is their requirement. Accordingly, they have to give different offers and yeah, try analyzing their needs, absolutely. Right, and I think, I mean, they suppose, yeah. And their store uh, design is also, I think it is not right. So they have to actually display more of the private level brand more of the electronics and apparels, maybe in the in the first floor or ground floor. That is how they can create that impulse buying as well. Yes, so Shavin has written new apparels. Yeah, of course. So they have to first thing they have to check their own store that what is happening there, and I mean, what is the structure? They have to design it. Maybe it is possible that the discounts and offers are not visible that much. That you have they have to do. And then they have to connect with the uh, local people with the lucrative offers, absolutely. And similarly, already they got the customers like male 55 years and older. So they can have some segment only for these particular customers because who are already coming, definitely they need to do something for them. And again, they have to get extra customers who are not coming. Yeah, so they have... Uh, Okay, I'm checking the Q&A also. Yeah, so Atisha has written in the q and I think we need to introduce a crazy offer. Yes, what kind of, so you have to find out, Atish, that what kind of crazy offer you need to give, right? So, uh, yeah, so somebody has written, they should offer more discounts and some coupon on some product, yeah. So this discount coupon offer, we understand. But we have to target that, the, which customers should be targeted, which kind of uh, product should, be, should uh, be within the range of this discount and coupon. So that is very, very important. So first of all, they actually should target, firstly, they already, the people who are already visiting, they are the male, as I have just mentioned, younger generation who are the students or maybe the 55 plus age. So for students, they have to give some different kinds of, uh, they have to store something where they can, cheaper version where it is, um, I mean, important and necessary for the students that they have to uh, put there in the store. Similarly, for the elderly person, they can, they can, if it's possible, they can find, they can use something, a medicine kind of segment where they can have more people. So that is for the people who are coming. Now, next, who are not coming for them, they have to go, they have to visit the local area and they have to analyze their requirement. And only for that particular product, that particular journal, 
they have to give different kind of discount and offer. So Tonushri has written they should keep different range range of products so that every person can buy according to their availability. Yes, yes Tonushri, it's possible that in that particular locality, the purchasing power of the people are lesser. So that there can be a that can be a possible reason behind their loss, but obviously they cannot shift their location. So they have to do something within that location itself. So as you have said, that according to their affordability, they can find some, some cheaper version of the product also. They can store it. Vinita has written, we can give offer to loyalty customers to increase the bill value. Absolutely, we can do that. That's a good idea. Yeah, budget-friendly product, Rishika has written. Atish has written, we need to do something to attract children or teenager to force their parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this you can do that also. So this is not good for the parents, maybe, but we can do something. You can uh, find some toys. So by I mean, forcefully, parents has to buy for their children. Yeah. So they can take feedback from the customers to understand. Absolutely. So that is the first thing they have to do. So they have to take the feedback, especially from the local people, because they are not coming, which is something uh, unusual. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is a good point that we can offer free delivery at a certain distance. Yes, that are also done. That is also possible, but first they have to buy now, then you can give free delivery, but that, that is a lucrative offer, you, you're right. So they can offer one-on-one -on -one offer. They can buy this, get free introduction. Yeah, so you have, you have I know you have lots of these offers normally we get. So you have lots of ideas for that. So first thing, the, the suggestion from ourselves to that particular uh, store is to go to the local people, analyze their demand, take their feedback that what is the problem they are facing in that particular store. And then so people are visiting only. So maybe the ambulance of the store is good. Maybe they are going for, uh, for AC. So, but they are not. So you have to push. First of all, we have to push people to come inside the store. Second of all, we have to push people to buy more if they, if, if they are already in the store. And thirdly, we have to push people to buy more private level brand and buy more electronics and apparel where the profit margin is more, right? So this is the, and this is the main discussion of today's topic that if you have, so I think you can, you can understand that you can get lots of different types of data set like that. And you can go through one by one doing little bit of calculation. And if you have knowledge, you can definitely go with a deeper calculation to find out the problem area. And then you have to suggest them. So maybe in future, your client may only ask for the problem area, not for the suggestion. So you have to restrict yourself by pointing out this, 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 this are the problem area of your store. If the client in future tell us, tell, I mean, ask you for the suggestion also, then accordingly, you have to give them that some suggestion so that then after it's up to them whether they uh, listen to you or not but that would be your job as a business analyst or data scientist or maybe a normal uh, marketing person or anything finance person you will have different kinds of data but you have to go through data right so shayan has a uh, that is the last thing i am reading and then i'm going to the next topic next thing the shayan has written the store can increase their advertising capacity through mobile bands. Yes, I mean, advertising capacity means the reach, you can say, you're saying, I think the reach to the customer with advertisement, they can do is, yeah, that is also an important thing to understand where you have to advertise, how you have to advertise, in what particular point of time you need to put this advertisement. It's a long discussion. So obviously they can do that. Right. Now I'm going to the last thing. So it is, now it is only discussion. So I'm going to tell you that why we are, we are moving beyond statistics. So many of you are from the background of commerce. So you can you understand a little bit of statistics. So what we, are do, we have done till now is you can find these are the data, which is known as the structured data. What is the meaning of structured data? So this is data means it is only row and column. You can find that all the data set which I have given, especially this kind of data set you have to go with in future. So these data are called structured data, right? It is structured because all these things are numbers and it is with row and it is with column. 
So you cannot find anything other than numbers. So if you can put any word in your Excel, Excel cannot calculate. So if you go with any other uh, softwares, I think some of you have heard about SPSS maybe. We have R, we have Python, we have eView. So lots of different softwares are there where you can do the calculation. But if you have to first put everything into numbers. Similarly, if it is gender, you cannot write male and female because they cannot calculate. No? So you have to put some numbers. Suppose male is one, female is two or vice versa. So this is the, this is the limitation of statistics. So now I'm coming to the last portion of my uh, today's session. And then I'm going to take your questions. So I'm going to this agenda once. Yeah. So this, this action plan, we have discussed this also, this working with the case, the problem identification, data analysis. We have done a little bit of data analysis and uh, we have made a story. I mean, the, uh, the made a story means here the story from the data so you can understand the problem. And then we have, we have you have actually, suggested different action plans. So the last topic is intro to some advanced data driven. So this is a very, very interesting concept. So the thing is that nowadays, especially everything, each and every possible thing is data driven. And these data may not be structured data. That means we may not find rows and columns. So if I think you have heard about the facial recognition, so if you find that uh, just before a few months, there is a challenge in fa Facebook that is 10 year challenge. So what they are doing, actually they are collecting your pictures because when we have to, that is a segment which is known as machine learning. So we have to teach machine something and then machine can learn obviously quicker than us and better than us. And then they can actually predict everything. So to, to teach machine, I need to give lots of data to machine. So if I teach machine how to recognize a fish face, then I have to give them lots of faces, 10,000, 20,000 faces. Then only machine can learn that how to read a particular facial structure and they can then predict. So if I can put this kind of a challenge to a beat, so you can imagine how many pictures they are gathering, right? So all these pictures, that means the gap of this and 10 years back. So if I can teach this to the machine, then whenever I'm putting a picture of a chill child, machine can find out what can be the most, I mean, closed version of this particular child after 10 years, what he or she will look like. So for that, we need data. So these faces, these pictures, these are not structured data. So statistics cannot handle it. So this Excel sheet cannot handle it. So the problem of this statistics, the limitation of the Excel statistics is first, we cannot go to a big data. So the if you can count, I think 1 million, this kind of a row, 10 lakhs, some 1 lakh rows you can find in Excel. You cannot go beyond that. But nowadays, we need bigger data. That is why big data is a very catchy and hot term now. So it is absolutely, I mean, uh, infinite number of data we are gathering each and every seconds. And all the data are not structured data. So first thing, big data cannot be handled with statistics. Second thing, unstructured data. Your face is a data. Your voice is a data. Whatever you are writing in your, uh, in, in the social media, in the Twitter, in your chat box, these are the data. So these are not structured data. So it is beyond the capacity of statistics. And thirdly, if you do analysis through statistics, you need some time. But here, with every second, millisecond, we need the calculation, we need to analyze the data. So that is why, for these three reasons, we have to look beyond statistics and we have to go to machine learning. And that is why it is very, 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 very important and popular topic nowadays. And we have lots and lots of jobs in this particular segment. Because every look into, uh, just think that suppose I'm searching uh, today morning, I was searching. So suppose I, I'm planning to visit Goa. So I'm searching it in Google. Within the next few seconds, you can find if you go through your Facebook, lots and lots of advertisements are coming for this uh, Goa trip, the hotels of Goa, different offers, 
So that means people, I mean, somebody are watching actually what you are doing. So these are your data. These are data for their benefit, their marketing policies. So and they need only one second to give you this kind of uh, feedback. Think about Netflix. So Netflix is a very important and I mean example of this machine learning and artificial intelligence because what they are doing, they are actually checking your demography and what you are searching. So they are providing you recommendations. And the Netflix, the main business is with this recommendation. So recommendations are coming from the data analysis. What they are analyzing, they're analyzing your some of your uh, personal data and what you are searching for. So in the same, suppose I have suppose you two are suppose two of you, one is a fond of the movie with fights and one with one is fond of the movie with romantic scenes so maybe they are giving you the same recommendations of same movie and they are giving they are showing you the clips of the scene of fights to one particular customer and the scenes of the romantic scene for other customer so according to according to their data analysis so they are actually, they have gathered this, I think 53,000 different genre of movie. So can you imagine that this huge number of data is with them? So it's not, it's not possible for one particular, one group of human being to get rid of this kind of data and then match it to your kind of, uh, your, um, what, what you, your likings and then give you the recommendation. So it is beyond human beings. So that is why you have to go for machine learning. If you go through the chess player, so today out of the, if you think for, the, I mean, if you look for the top 50 chess players, 48 are machine, two are human being. So what are they doing? That means for a machine, if you can give lots and lots of all the moves of all the, I mean, chess, uh, chess matches from the beginning till yesterday, so lots, they can understand all the, they, the machine can remember the, all the moves we cannot, no? So that is why ultimately we have to go towards machine to do that. So yeah, yeah, so, so you're right, it's 70, 78,000, so it's more than that. So now think that if you are going beyond this much of at one particular level, I have to go to the machine to take help. Similarly, if you, if I think you have uh, noticed that, suppose you are, you got one mail where some question is there in Gmail, right? And after a few days, you can get some, some mail that do you want to answer five days are, I mean, passed. So that means somebody are reading your mails. So whenever you are there in the smartphone, so your every movement is a data. So obviously we have some difficulties. We have some, these are ethical things are coming out. There's one particular segment. But people are sitting and they are only gathering your all the movements in the smartphones, in the, in the Google, everywhere. And they are collecting the data for them. And accordingly, they are feeding it. Similarly, we got, I, I, I have written a paper where I have collected the stock price prediction along with the newspaper report on some different companies. So this newspaper report, this report, the term, suppose they have in newspaper, there's some good things are there for this company or the bad things. So these are not a particular structured data. No? These are a word or a state, a sentence. So that sentence, and I have clubbed it with the next few days stock price prediction. So if there is something good in the newspaper, whether the stock price is uh, moving up or not. So that means this is a data which I cannot put in this Excel sheet. So I have to go to this machine learning. So that is why, you're now you you everybody I think so in in if you want to go with HR also so not only human resource the today's thing is the human resource analytics so HR analytics that means again you have to go by the data you have to understand about the attrition rate you have to understand about the performance so all the matrices are there which is there in the HR but you have to feed it with the numbers or beyond number that means you have to feed it with the machine learning. You have to do the clustering, you have to do classifications. So everything is coming in terms of machine learning. So that is the, uh, I mean, last segment. And now I'm open to your questions. So I have got some questions already, some uh, who have asked me for some 
know, chemical form you want to establish. So, right. So, this is what I need to say. So, your focus today, I think, everybody. So, if you are a little bit of interest in this kind of uh, world where the numbers or some other faces or voices can give you some inner idea on the story and then you can find something from there and you can tell people that I mean, you can do this, this, this. So that is also, that is that you have to do. So this, this should be your next focus in the career. Uh, that is most of you. I think everybody, definitely everybody should not do the same thing. But if you have some interest and if you have some interest in numbers also, because you have to deal with numbers, may not be very hardcore sums, but the numbers would be there, may not be calc calculate, um, I mean, calculus or trigonometry, but the arithmetic is there. So that is my suggestion to all of you to go and find that what is the whole new world. And you have to just jump into that, that if you have the interest, right? So, yeah, so I'm getting something. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm just giving you the answer one by one. So Nidhi, I have a, I have a question uh, before that, while we are discussing the that particular Excel data. So I'm just giving the answer to Nidhi. So Nidhi has asked me that, uh, can you explain one second the different catchment area on the basis of the kilometer? Yeah. So uh, Nidhi, if the customers are coming uh, within two kilometer of the store, that means they have been tagged as catchment area one. So two to five kilometer, that means not very close. That is two to five kilometers. So I'm getting this data from the address. So two to five kilometer is catchment area two, five to 10 kilometer is three and beyond 10 kilometer is four. So these are the code, these are known as code. So again, Nidhi, um, same thing. So I cannot write two to five kilometers. So then I cannot calculate anything. So I have to make it, I have to convert it into numbers. So this is called coding, okay. Okay, so I have a question from Atrika that, uh, ma'am, I have heard about big data engineering. Actually, is it, what is it actually? So yeah, so big data engineering is the deployment portion. So you can, it's, it, it can find from the uh, term itself. So if you want to be a data engineer, you have to have the knowledge of engineering first. But if you have to go, that means the data scientist and data engineer and data analyst, these are three very closely related terms, but obviously they are not same. So data engineering is the deployment. That means where you have to put your knowledge into the machine, right? That means you have to, you can make different kinds of uh, things also. So we're going beyond this machine learning to artificial intelligence robotics, where you have to have the knowledge of engineering. Now for data analyst is the not that much very tough sums, but on the basis of this knowledge of statistics and arithmetic, you can find the data analysis you can do, and you can uh, suggest people. So this is the job. This is the term known as data analyst. And data scientist is a little bit more than data analyst, where you have to do more sums. You have to do coding also, because if you have a hard about Python, it's a language where you have to write, write down the code. So for data scientists, you need to know the coding. And for data analyst, the coding part is not important. And for data engineering, you have to actually deploy the knowledge. So that is why you need to have that idea of engineering as well. So Manisha has written that uh, if we search smartphone or computer, then someone, someone times letter, we see, yes, Manish. So everybody knows that now. So this is actually, we are vulnerable, right? So actually it's called compromised. But again, just like the fire, we, I know that lots of difficulties are there, but we have to use it. So you're using it. And that is why you have a new segment coming as cybersecurity. That is also an upcoming uh, uh, thing which you can look into. Because whenever there is this kind of uh, data malpractices, you need to have people who can control it. And that is known as cybersecurity. Right. So we have a... Uh, yeah, so... Just a minute. So I can check one by one. So Atish has written uh, that how can I start a chemical and pharmaceutical company as a beginner? So Atish, first of all, so you need money for that. So I'm just keeping this money aside. I can I assume that you have the investment. 
So for any type of uh, company, if you have to start as an entrepreneur, you have to look for the market. So you have to look first whether the demand is there or not. So if it is a pharmaceutical, let it be a pharmaceutical company. So first of all, you need to check that, that what is the demand of this particular, this product which you are discussing and what is the amount of competition? Because if you are going to get a huge competition and you were just starting, so you can understand that a brand name is not there. So the faith would be lesser. So you, you may end with a very small portion of the market share, which is not definitely profitable for you. So that is why first thing you have to think that of the competition at the market condition. So suppose market condition is not good for Kolkata. I'm just giving one example. But suppose it is good for some other state. Maybe if you can look into Northeast state, maybe the competition is lesser. If it is a localized product, you want to say it. Then you have to look for that. So first one is you have to calculate your market size. So after calculation of the market size, if you find that it is a good amount of, and you can capture some of the market share, then you have to look into your own production. So obviously you know that ultimate goal is to have the profit. So that means profit means you have to have the revenue more and cost less. So you have to look for next next step is to look inside your capacity that how you can make it with lesser cost and how you can make it, I mean, you can make, uh, I mean, the supply more or the quality more better by which you can get, grab the customers. After that, next step is to find out the customers, which is very, very important, which is very difficult that you have to know that I am there. I am a new firm, please come and visit and buy something from me. So that is the marketing and branding. That is a huge exercise you have to do. So after that, so first, first is the market size calculation. Second thing is to calculate your own capacity in terms of the cost reduction, in terms of the quality improvement and the production, increase in the production. Third is the catch, uh, catching of the market. So you have to go the branding and marketing uh, things. And lastly, you have to, after launching it, you have to go with this to, uh, to I mean, sustain with the same customer. So that, that is a, I mean, it's a continuous thing you have to do every time, all the time, that to make your brand good, make your product better and better improve like that. Okay, so uh, Atrika has written uh, that, uh, how can I, uh, how can one become data scientist and data analyst? So for that, uh, you're of which stream, Atrika, you have to go to, again, you can, we have, in India, we have courses, little bit, online courses are available for data scientists, but this is obviously not give you that kind of uh, thing. So you can just write one row in the, in your uh, CV that I have done this thing, but obviously knowledge wise, you should go with a full-time course. So one thing you can go with a full-time course of data science, science or you can go with via if you can go through PGTM and take the uh, take this kind of a specialization of data analyst or data science then also because if you are going to do a full-time course your uh, this placement would be a part of that course mm -hmm. so for you since you are doing undergraduate so for everybody all of you my suggestion is to go for a full-time proper course because that will give you not only the your CV is improved, you have to have the knowledge because to crack interviews, we know that's the hardcore questions people do. I mean, just not the, I mean, the deep questions that how to calculate that this kind of question people ask to take a data scientist and it's a good market with good, uh, uh, good package. So obviously you have to go through that. So I think I again, I'm currently doing maths honors with stats is my elective. Yes, definitely. So this is a, this is a the data science or data analysis, a very good field for you. So you can check for that. So you are in which year, uh, Africa? So just go through that. I'm just coming to the next questions of others. Uh, that, but the maths honors stats pass is a very good option to be a data scientist. Shubhrothi has written Google's main profit comes from the ad generated by the user's search history product. Yes, yes, Shubhrothi, we were right, absolutely. So Shayan has written, how can anyone come to this field, uh, field from literature and language background? 
you can shion but you have to do a little bit of so data science if i'm saying i have told you that data engineering data science and data analyst so you have to look for data analyst portion not maybe data science or data engineering you, you it is you it is i mean you cannot apply for that but for data an analyst you can obviously but you have to go through i mean if you are applying anywhere you have to go through a little bit of maths so if you are already suppose you want to prepare for pgdm so obviously you have to crack cat or mat or zat or some of the exams so you have to have the knowledge of the numbers so if you can do it and you can do some courses um, that in that time to make your cv ready you can go with some small small courses udemy or coursera and then you can make your cv ready to apply and then you have to go for the full time courses and then that means you have to first uh, uh, tell people that they, they i mean do something in your cv that people will take maybe in the pgdm program or mba program or data science program data analyst program so that you have to do that background that uh, i mean homework you have to so pratik has written difference between data analyst and business analyst here pratik i have told just now so what we have done today that is not data science that data analyst that is actually business analyst so we have the idea of the business and i we have the idea of the number so data analyst means it is mostly data less of the business and there actually if it is data science then you have to go beyond the capacity of statistics you have to go deep into the machine learning deep learning so you have to prepare you have to understand how to write the code so again uh, we got people in data science from background of bcom also so they don't have any idea of coding since i am from economics background i would i never had anything coding but you can learn right so here also this part is okay you can take care of this coding part but if it is data scientist not exactly data analyst so data science term is there that means you have to do coding also and the data portion is more business portion is less if it is business analyst or actually business analyst or data analyst is the same kind of term where you have to have the business idea which is more prominent data idea little lesser so you don't have to go to the uh, this coding part but you need to know the statistics and other stuffs shweta has written which courses are you suggesting to better for learning coding ma'am so yeah shweta so if you are from if you are from engineering or if you have any any knowledge of c++ c++ and if you are good at that you don't have to uh, learn anything because it's if you are entering into some full time course automatically you you need to learn everything but if you have don't idea of don't have any idea of coding then you should go with some of the some of the udemy courses are very cheap for 50 rupees i think per course so these are not i mean uh, not give you any uh, anything extra in your cv but the knowledge wise you can take the knowledge yeah atrika you are in first year so you have time just uh, go through the entire process think about that and then you can yeah so computer science atrika so no problem you are you are ready with actually to jump into that field so be focused because you need to have good marks also for for the graduation so every time in the in future whenever you are going to sit for any interview people will check for the marks obviously rishika has written hr or marketing is a good career option for any psychology student absolutely psychology student is very closely related to hr so in our college what we give we normally give a basket full of uh, different subjects so it is not only hr or only marketing so you can have this kind of any course where you can in the second year you can take two or two different uh, specialization kind of so you can have a, a combination of hr and marketing as well because then it would be easier that whenever when the company comes so they can look at your cv first na, before uh, calling them for interview before short listing so in the cv they can find your you have some i mean subjects of hr some subjects of marketing also so obviously diversification is there so your options would be more but uh, this is a, this is a good career option rishika yeah they they treat they treat the uh thank you ma'am for yeah thank you vinith has written full time course of data science gives an extra edge over others online courses obviously when this is this is beyond any uh, confusion that you have to go specially when after just passing out from after doing graduation 
you have to go for any of the full time courses when that anything whatever wherever you want to go but go for a full time courses that is totally different because in the full time courses you are going to do lots of projects we have lots of capstone projects in not only for my college any college so the projects this group work these are not there as a part of any online courses so and the projects if you if you in future whenever you are going to sit for the interview job interview the questions will come from the projects so you should have good projects in your cv this is very very important and if somebody asks you from the projects automatically you have a good uh, good hold of your own project uh, so your answer will be better okay so ati yeah atish has written one day i will open my business and i will meet you yes atish so i i would be happy to be your first customer right so at the end i think your my mail id would be there you can find and then you can mail it to me okay so yeah i think it is done i write let let me just okay siddharth has written ma'am what can we say about me i'm from first year bsc mathematics and computer science i think i can handle coding stuff in java c c++ interested in machine learning and deep learning if you have any advice yes first of all siddharth you are ahead of many of uh, them because you have the right subjects and you have the right thing but uh, you are in the first year so you have two years of time so my suggestion for you is to learn r and python so again uh, if you have time just don't this don't neglect your main focus which is your graduation you have to have a good marks over 60% try to like be like that but if you have extra time just go through r coding and python so if you are already know you, you in coding things so you may not enroll in some uh, online courses you can do it on your own also you can have lots of youtube videos you can check so if you know r and python na then after 2 years when you are actually hitting the market with as a, i mean pgdm or data science uh, courses because that is also i mean in in practice also we we don't take everybody so there is a process okay one uh, uh, exam and then a interview so obviously if you are ready with that so we have a other other courses available in india also then you will be better position than others so simran has written hr and finance option uh, just right uh, ma'am hr and finance is option for better career hr and finance or hr or finance so simran if you are from finance background become a student and if you are good at accounts then it's your first choice should be finance and then again you can take subjects from hr also so then it would be open to you for both the things okay need he okay so thank you thank you right yeah so komod has written i'm the first semester doing bcom honors and parallelly pursuing ca course yeah komod so you are you are focusing on ca so that is also okay you can you can go with ca so not that that everybody has to do uh, this kind of uh, i mean career in business analyst or data science but so your first focus should be ca ca is a very good career option as well but ca is a tough option and it will take long time so after after 2 years if you can if you realize that it is not going that much okay then you can think of uh, pgdm or mba portion yes yeah, so uh, i am in bsc economics first year so what short term courses can i do for so economics uh, student in first year you don't need to do anything it's a tough subject economics honors if you're doing from calcutta university is it is really really tougher so first year focus into economics otherwise your marks would be bad so and then in the second year third year just think what you want to do then for for you also i have the same thing if you want to be a business analyst or data scientist so you already you are you are in your curriculum you are doing statistics you will do statistics but you can do related subjects and coding also i mean coding is the future right some of that's just like english bengali hindi you can have that language also so if you have some time you can go through small small courses or book to have coding is difficult for you to understand because you don't have any idea i i, I suppose in coding just take small small steps right the first year bsc economics look into economics first 
Okay, so Simran has the same thing. So BBA, uh, BBA final year Simran. So this is high time Simran for you. So if you are doing BBA, that means you have to go for PGDM and uh, or MBA. So for that, I think you are preparing for CAT or something also. So prepare for that. Go for the quant portion. Uh, I mean, practice more. And again, if you are trying to do something in this field of data science or business analyst, you have to just look for this, a small, small courses of statistics. So BBA, you have statistics, but not that much deeper. So you can go and take some Udemy courses or Coursera is costly, whatever, that statistics also, because statistics is the first step to be a business analyst or data scientist. Okay, so Shanchari has written finance and data analysis analytics for my specialization. Will it be a good choice? Absolutely. So finance also nowadays, this I have told mentioned stock price predictions. We have lots of different things in the finance field which you can do with data knowledge of data analysts. So it's a very good combination, Shanchari. If you can go through that, then you will definitely go in with a good job. Yeah, so Java programming is fine. I think it is there in the school in ISC, ISC board. But just you, I think as per my knowledge, you think I need I think you need to practice further. So go maybe it's Java. So go through the practice of Java and then you can come with the other programming language as well if you want. Okay, so I think it's done. Okay, so uh, let us finish it here. So I think uh, yeah, Shweta, I think uh, you can, I'm stop uh, sharing yes. and you can just share my uh, sure. mail ID. Sure, sure. Yeah, so this is my mail ID. I think you can check this. So if you have anything, any anything you need, you can drop me a mail. I think I can I can give you the reply. So yeah, just if you want, you can copy. So since many of you are in the first year, so you may need some some kind of assistance maybe in the future. So then also you can just mention that you have you are you were there in this workshop. Then I can connect. Okay. Yeah, Shweta, they are asking about the certificate. I think that you need a few days, right? After collection, collecting their uh, uh, mail ID. Seven, yes, seven to 10 working days, the certificates will be emailed to them. I'm just posting an update on the group. Okay, so I got some others. I'm just, uh, I'm going through it quickly. So, so Utpal has written that uh, with status, Madam, with statistics and having no experience in computer programming, no problem. So if uh, you're like me, right? So statistics and if you have statistics, no problem. You should have the knowledge of some numbers that is important. And while doing the course, you can understand about the computer programming. Okay, so thank you. I think it's done. So thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for the wonderful session. Thank you. Yeah, bye-bye.